Hola, guapas, and welcome to the Hola, guapa podcast. For those of you who are new to the show, I'm your host, Nisha Batesh. I'm also the founder and creative at Hola, guapa, a digital community of 10,000 artists from all over the world, a blog, a website, this podcast, and most recently, my very own small batch slow fashion line. On this podcast, we dismantled the limiting stories and stereotypes holding creative entrepreneurs back, and together, we redefine what it truly means to be a successful artist. Holy moly, I am so excited about this episode today, guapas, because I am sitting down with the one-of-a-kind Sarah Camposarconi. With over 1 million style-obsessed followers on TikTok and dubbed fashion's sustainable maximalist by publications like Vogue, The New York Times, Harper's Bazaar, and many more, it turns out her most impressive superpower of all is not taking any of it too seriously. In this episode, we talk about her quick rise to fame, her personal style and outfit building process, how she shuts down online and in real life trolls and with with positivity, and what's next on the horizon for this creative icon. So if you're curious about gaining insights on how to leverage social media to turn your passion into a paycheck, want to learn more about what goes into the day-to-day of becoming a fashion influencer, or are simply looking to feel inspired by Sarah's story, then this is the creative conversation for you. And with that, let's get into the show. Yeah. So hello, Um, my name is Sarah campus Um, But I guess a lot more people would know me as Sarah Camps um, on TikTok. I'm a content creator, uh, full-time stylist on the side, as well as, I guess, a little bit of a jewelry designer because I started my own jewelry line um, a few years ago now, I want to say. Amazing. um, I guess I'm also Canadian. I'm from Canada, Toronto. Um, which is something that I feel like a lot of people don't know. A lot of people assume I live like in New York or something, but <laughs> yeah, just a, just a Canadian gal. So <laughs> that's awesome. Definitely multifaceted. Um, I want to go back to the beginning and just get an understanding of kind of how you came to be you. Your style is so unique and eccentric and definitely all your own. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I know, as you mentioned, you know, you have your own jewelry line, um, you're very active on social and have been in amazing um, publications like Vogue and Elle. So I just, I want to start at the beginning and get a better understanding of where it all started for you. Yeah. So I have always been, I feel like a very creative person. Um, And I think I really started like diving into like, I guess, you know, not so like, um, like not the typical everyday clothing, things that are a little bit more outside of the box, a little different. Um, when I first started uh, thrift shopping. So in high school, um, I definitely dressed a little bit more <laughs> toned down than I do now. I think just like, again, like the age you are when you're like in high school and you, you know, you're trying to fit in and you don't want to yeah. like get any fun of. So it's a little bit harder to really figure out who you are and even just express who you are at that time. Um, And so I think that that was like a huge thing for me where I kind of just, when I started secondhand shopping, I feel like I was able to kind of pick out pieces that really grabbed my attention. And they were definitely pieces that are just like more colorful or just something super like unique that like one of a kind that I knew no one else would have that yeah. always like in- intrigued me Um, kind of like, you know, separating myself from like, you know, the bunch and dressing like everyone, you know, else. So I think that's where like my love for like vintage fashion and just like unique fun pieces really kind of started. Um, And from there, I guess I just I mean, I've always again, like, love posting um, fashion content over on Instagram, but it wasn't until uh, the beginning of the pandemic when I first created a TikTok channel. And at the time I was actually working an office job, but because we all switched to, you know, working at home, I was now not even getting dressed like in regular clothes to go to anywhere. I was in my pajamas all the time. And I was like, I have so many like fun, like cool clothes. And I just feel like it's not the same, you know, posting on Instagram. I was like, why not like make a TikTok and start posting like little outfit videos. It's what I started watching on TikTok when I first got TikTok um, was, was fashion videos. Cause that's what I love. So I started posting videos and I think honestly it was like 
one of my very first videos that I posted, um, it was like a full puppy print, like outfit. I had like a matching vest, a matching bag, a matching blouse, like it all matched. And it was like an all over puppy print. And that video really took off. Um, and so that was kind of like how it all began. I feel like, um, TikTok was like a very fast, like growth. Like after that video, I just kept posting videos in my outfits and it just kept kind of like going from there. Um, and a lot of people from TikTok would come over to my Instagram and be like, oh my gosh, like you post fashion content on Instagram. So I feel like there's a lot of people who get discovered almost in a way through TikTok. Yeah. Um, and it just happened so fast. Like I, I swear, like I was working like in my regular office job and then a, a year later, because of all of this, I'm, I was able to like, literally just do what I'm doing now, just creating like fashion content, um, like full time, which is it's insane to me, because never in a million years did I think, like, that's kind of how that would work. Um, okay, but... so talk to me about <laughs> that, because you experimented, you tried something new, it was a pandemic, there was a challenge in front of you, you know what yeah. I mean? And you obviously yeah. turned it into an incredible opportunity. But like you said, it happened so fast. So yeah. what are like some of the challenges that came your way that maybe you're even like still working through or, you know, as any, as a per, another creator um, or like fellow fashionista is thinking about aspiring to do what you're doing, mm -hmm. what, what advice would you give to them or share with them? Well, I would definitely say like the one thing that I think is like important to remember is to kind of, honestly just put yourself out there because I think like sometimes like, you know, the amount of views you get on videos and stuff, it's all over the place. So sometimes it's literally just like, you know, I don't know, something, something catches on and people just love it. But I, I honestly do think that especially at the time when I first started posting on TikTok and like building my um, channel there it was like prime like pandemic time and I feel like number one like everybody was on their phones just kind of like scrolling through things yeah but also like even more so I think people really love like the content that I make because it brings them joy um so it's like I don't know, this little spark of like happiness that I guess people get. I mean, I get it from just getting dressed in the outfits that I do because it's what I love. But to have that kind of like effect on people watching me is something that I've never in a million years thought would happen is not anything that like I was like, you know, I had that in the back of my mind while I'm making these videos. I'm genuinely just like getting dressed for my day and kind of showing people a little bit of my process. Um but I do dress like I definitely dress in like a lot of like fun colors, a lot of prints. Um, sometimes I mean, even sometimes I take the looks like so far where I'm like even making some of the pieces that I wear. But I mean, it's all just like my creative side, like coming through with everything. I just I love taking things to like the full extent that you can take it and like beyond like I love pushing like fashion limits and boundaries. I mean, I always refer to like when I was growing up, we had the show what not to wear. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I'm always like, I feel like that's a horrible show to kind of like, I mean, I totally get the idea behind it. But at the same time, it's like, I don't think there should ever be like a rule of like, what not to wear or like this color doesn't go with this color. It's like, yes, if you like it, wear it. And I always I mean, I, I think that as my TikTok grew and I mean, all social media in general grew, I really um, kind of tried to like push my like philosophy on life and on style and personal style and, you know, self-expression um, of just dressing, you know, for yourself and no one else really. And to dress to make yourself happy, because really at the end of the day, I mean, it's it's makeup, it's clothes, it's not, it, it's, it's silly to like, take it so seriously. Um, I just think to have, you know, to have fun with it, because why not? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think that that messaging comes across 
in, you know, all the content that you're creating. I know like one um, outfit that I saw that you wearing, it was like a, a piece of lettuce, like large, yeah. but it was like an earring of some sort yeah. or some sort of accessory. And I was like, okay, I need to get in touch with this girl because whatever she's doing is, is like so fabulous. And you definitely do take it to the next level. And that's what catches attention. You know, mm-hmm. that's what draws in an audience of, a younger girl or a guy or whoever it may be who um, is looking to you, you know, looking to you for inspiration to feel like they can do it too. They can put on something that's outside of the box and feel silly or happy or just kind yeah. of reflect however they're feeling at that time. Can you share a little bit more of like your creative process or um, how you come up with a look? Yeah. Um, usually most of the time I'm, kind of styling like a certain piece, um, which is kind of like the piece I'll start with when I'm building an outfit. Um, So like, for instance, today I styled a pair of bug printed tights. So there's just like bugs all over the um, tights. And I would like start with the piece. And then I kind of just like build off of that. I like to almost stick to like a bit of a theme or like a bit of like, a color like theory. So a lot of people will say like my outfits don't match at all. Um, And I don't even think they need to match. And I don't, you know, I don't believe in that anyway, but there is like logic to my madness. Some of the time, (laughs) like um, I do think like color wise, I try to make it balance like a little bit. Like if I'm going to wear a green headband, I'll put on some green shoes. So it kind of gives it that balance. But most of the time, I'm like a layering queen. So I like to layer things um, on top of one another. But I think that, I mean, to me, I love looking at like an outfit that has a lot going on. Like to me, to, to my eye, like that's what like pleases me. Like when there's just so much chaos in an outfit that, um, I don't know. It's just, I have to like dissect each piece. And I just think that that's like really cool. Um, so that's kind of like what I always keep in mind when I'm building outfits, but I also just love like really having fun with it. I mean, even when I layer, like I, I layer not only because I think it looks nice, but also it helps me get a lot more use out of the clothes that I have in my closet too. Because for instance, like today I'm wearing like, um, a tank top over like a button down shirt. So the tank top that I would probably not get much use of in the winter, I can wear by layering it. Um, so I kind of just try and look at it like that too, because a lot of the content I also that I post, um, is about sustainability, um, when it comes to fashion. And even that is like a huge thing that I feel like there are little things like just styling things in different ways where you get more use out of your clothing, um, that are great ways to practice sustainability. So. Yeah. I mean, that's something that you and I definitely share in common is finding unique ways to to be sustainable. And I think that one of the things that I always am chatting about with, with content creators is sustainability. And I think that there's sort of this, I don't want to say like this archaic thought process behind what, what is sustainable and what isn't, but to your point, there's other ways that you can incorporate sustainability as a practice. So whether it's purchasing something with purpose, right? Something that you really, really love that you feel like is a piece of art that you're going to hold onto forever, not just because it's a trend or because everybody else has it or all these different layering techniques that you're talking about. Can you talk a little bit more about like why sustainability is so important to you and kind of how that all started? Yeah, I think for me, I mean, being so like invested in like the fashion industry and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I've watched like every documentary there is out there. Um, And even that alone has already like taught me so much about how, like, how bad, you know, or I guess how bad, but just like the fashion industry in general, the kind of impact it has on the environment, um, or just like the exploitation of like, the workers that are making our clothes and, and all of that. And I think, um, I mean, even with like the whole like TikTok, you know, thing, like, you know, everyone's on TikTok now and everything like that. I think it's hard to kind of, I just try and be like more of a a positive, like there are ways where you can still enjoy fashion and still shop and have fun without it, you know, necessarily being like, okay, we're buying like fast fashion all the time. But I do think that with, like social media um I think that that it almost kind of accelerates like the fast fashion industry too at the same time because there's just so many trends that like come and go 
um, that I think like, you know, a lot of people are still trend focused. And I feel like for me, when I stopped, you know, following trends, which would have been like around like high school, when I started like secondhand shopping is when I really started figuring out my personal style. Yeah. So I always kind of try and like tell people that, you know, to begin with, like, you kind of have to ignore these like trends going on because, you know, they're there because they want you to buy. It's not because like that's who you are and that, you know, you really like wearing that. Um, so to me, I think that it's important because of, you know, the environmental factors and everything, but also because it's really helped me in figuring out who I am, like as a person myself. So I think it's just always, you know, I've always had like that part of me where I'm just like, I really, I really like want other people to kind of look at sustainable fashion that way too. And I mean, especially with the amount of people I've like met, um, on social media now, like, like, for instance, like designers, and um, just people who are creating like one of a kind, like super unique, fun clothes from like upcycling, like old scraps, and yeah, not, getting, you know, not instead of throwing things out, it's like, we can turn it into something new. And I have even myself took a few sewing classes. So even now I'm like trying to sew and make my own things too. I mean, it's so it's so much more meaningful too, when it's, you know, it's been made like, ethically and it's it's made with like love and it's t- totally one of a kind for me that's like I, I just think that that's the best thing yeah I mean it's truly like art as fashion you know and I think that your message and your medium and everything about who you are is really resonating right now as I mentioned kind of earlier you've been featured in publications like Harper's Bazaar and Vogue and L. I want to talk to you a little bit about what you feel like people are resonating so much with and even dive a little bit deeper into kind of your community and some of the feedback that you've gotten both positive and negative. Cause I'm sure, you know, just like we get love, we also get hate and I'm sure that that has come up and I just want to dive into that a little bit deeper. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I get both the love and the hate. I think one of like my like most asked questions on like TikTok, for instance, is just like, how do people react to you like in public, yeah. like out on the streets or whatever, shopping or at a grocery store? And the thing is, is I always tell people, people are so much quicker to say something nasty online. Mm-hmm. Because in person, I mean, the most I'll get is like maybe like a weird stare. But if, but honestly, a lot of people when I'm like out and about are super, super nice. Like I'll get compliments on, because it's, it's something that people don't normally see. Um, And even like where I live, it's not like I'm like downtown, big city Toronto. So I'm still like kind of in a suburban area outside of the city. And a lot of people that, you know, live around me in my neighborhood are like, you know, like middle-aged, very like plain Jane type of people. So when they see me, it's almost like, okay, maybe she's like a little crazy, but she's fun. And like, you know, (laughs) they'll smile and stuff and, and say hi. So I definitely get more positive reactions in real life. And then online, there's always going to be, you know, the negative comments and things like that. I think that that's something that, I mean, Being on social media, you kind of have to almost expect it because it's never going to be just like all positive things. Like it it just comes with the territory, I feel like. And then on top of it, I'm also, you know, dressing in a completely like different way than a lot of people do. So it's a lot of people are just like, I don't I don't even get it. But that's the thing. I just I just always like to keep it like super positive. And I don't even really like respond to negative comments most of the time and if I do it's usually just again like something like you know I I think it always shows more of who that person is than who I am um of course and so it's I usually kind of just kill them with kindness and go, go about my day um because like I said too I mean I'm trying to be an example of what I try and preach and it's just to you know if you love it then it really doesn't matter what anyone else says um right so that's kind of all like I really think about when I'm getting dressed. Um, but yeah, being featured in um, like different um, articles, magazines, anything, New York Times, like that stuff's always still, I mean, even still insane to me that 
um, I've been able to do that again. So, so often in like such a short period of time. Um, but I do think that again, like, I mean, for instance, the one article that I was featured in, um, the New York times article was one that I was featured in, like kind of at the beginning, right after like my TikTok started taking off a bit. And that one was literally like the title of the article was literally like dressing for joy during the pandemic. Yeah. And I think that it is almost still kind of part of the reason that I get so much, so many, um, like editors and stuff like reaching out to, to interview. I think a lot of the time, you know, there's like a lot of these different like TikTok trends that go around and, Oh, are you like clown core or like fairy core? I, I just think that I don't fit inside of any of those like little boxes or those little like niches. Um, I just kind of like switch it up day to day. Um, but I think that again, I think just a, a lot of it comes from just, the reactions that I get, um, like the reactions I get on my videos. Um, I think like a lot of people just, I think that, I guess a lot of people find it inspirational. It, I, I mean, I, every time I talk about myself like that, I'm like, oh, I don't want to make it sound like I'm like saying that, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. I think one of the, one comment I got that like really stuck with me, um, that kind of like was like, okay, you know what, like, I'm doing this for me, but I'm also kind of doing it, like for all these people that watch me, because it's, it's like the most, like, fulfilling thing in my life. Um, yeah. So, yeah, like someone said, like, you know, like, I would never dress like you, um, you know, although I totally like, admire your style, it's not like me at all. But since watching you, I've now kind of like, I, I have a better of understanding of like other people's style. And instead of making fun of someone, when I see something different that I don't get, I just honestly like appreciate it. Yeah. So it's not only are people kind of like warming up to my style and being like, okay, I get it. But just in general with like people around them now, they're just almost more like accepting, which I think is like a beautiful thing to have that kind of effect, you know? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's kind of what I think is like a common theme too. when I have these conversations with different creatives and all types of mediums is it truly is always, always circles back to the message. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't really matter what what you're doing. It's always that fundamental message that you either receive from some experience in childhood, or just as you kind of started evolving as an artist, or, you know, maybe you're still trying to figure out what that key message is. But I think for you, definitely, like, you know, utilizing self-expression and personal style as your vehicle to share and spread positivity seems mm -hmm. like the central kind of theme that you're after. And so to be able to hear that, like, reflected in that way from somebody else that you you almost sort of like guided them on their own journey is, is yeah. really cool and, and very, very fulfilling. I would imagine. Yeah, no, it's, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> um, so speaking of, you know, you know, we had kind of mentioned that you had received a lot of press and, you know, you have a really strong community and following behind you. What like single thing would you say? And I know it probably hasn't been one single thing, but like, what's something that you can speak to that you feel like totally changed this from a creative hustle or just a hobby into a legitimate business where you were in a position to quit your nine to five? Was it like Excel spreadsheets or being super consistent? Or was there like a pricing model or structure that you started working with? Really any daily practice that you utilize to turn your passion into a paycheck? Yeah. Well, I, so I was working as um, a marketing manager at the time. So I think I started that job um, just towards the end of like last year. And then I only ended up leaving that job and doing content creation full time just this past like summer. Um, and I think for me, I mean, I was trying at the time working like full, a full-time job where I had to go into an office again. Like after, this was kind of like when COVID started kind of, um, I guess, relaxing a little bit. Um, so I was back to going in an office now, but at the same time I was trying to create my TikTok videos. Um, so I would be waking up like two hours before I started work so I can do like film content and then I have to go into work. And so I think after doing that just for like six months or so, I was like, okay, this is like a lot on me. 
Um, and what also started happening around the beginning of this year while I was working like full time as well is I started working with a lot of like small brands um, and doing like a lot of brand like collaborations um, and so most of those were, were paid too. So, I mean, I've had no problem like working my full time job and doing this as a side hustle. Um, but it just kind of almost got like too much where I just felt like now I can't focus on one over the other. And I really, really wanted to like focus on my own, um, like my own thing. I mean, it's been something that I've always I've always wanted to do something where I can kind of just like work for myself and I can do what I love, you know, every day and, you know, turn that into a job. That's, it's truly something that I've always felt when it came to like work and like what I was going to do with my life and my future. It's something that I've always had so much like anxiety with, like, I'm just, it was always like, what am I going to do? I don't know. Like, yeah, I know how to put an outfit together, but how can you make that like into a living? Um, so honestly, TikTok is like really, really like changed my life as like silly as that sounds. Um, it really has because because of that, I was making enough money or making even more money than I was at my job. So I was like, I don't I don't need to like work this job anymore. Yeah. It's, I mean, it was. Yeah, it was just it all happened so fast. But also I'm like so grateful and it. it I think it all worked out for the best because as soon as I got to kind of leave that job and just do like content, like full time, I just feel like I've given like, you know, 110%. Whereas like before you can only do so much when you're like tired and it's like before work, if you don't get it done, it's already dark when you get home. Like, it's just, there's a lot of like behind the scenes kind of like parts to content creation that I feel like you know, I guess I never really like knew until I really started doing it full time. Um, But I but I love I love doing it full time. I love every part of it. So yeah, I think kind of what everything that you just shared kind of brings two ideas to mind. The first is this idea of like education and career, right? Like we're taught from such an early age that you follow this kind of educational path and you get your dream career. I think there's so many pivots along the way, whether it be with your education or in your career. And there's almost this like little voice inside of the back of your head, you know, steering you in, in a certain direction. And it's just how much you choose to listen to it or trust it. And it sounds like, you know, you, you didn't know what you were going to do. So you kept kind of inching down a certain path of marketing. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, do you feel like any of that experience has sort of led you to have like an, an understanding or a knowledge base around the power of marketing and social media? And therefore you kind of felt more comfortable to take the jump. Cause I think it's really helpful for like people on this path to kind of understand that there is no path. It's just putting yeah. one foot in front of the other. No, for sure. And I feel like, especially when it comes to, you know, going down like a creative path where, you know, it's, it's just not the typical, like, Oh, we're going to school to be like a doctor. And then you're going to go to med school and you're going to be a doctor. Like it's very, if, you know, if you want to work for yourself or whatever, it's, it's definitely very like, I don't think the path is like straight. Um, it's definitely like a lot of like things are thrown at you and you kind of have to like adapt. Um, but for sure, I think that working in marketing, especially out of all of my past jobs, I think that one has really helped me the most, especially because now I feel like I'm on the other end of like the marketing like spectrum here where I'm like the one that's you know, emailing people that work on marketing teams for a brand or a uh, a designer or whatever and they're reaching out to me whereas like that's what I used to do is like reach out to influencers and content creators to send product to and and basically work that way um but it's definitely helped me in all aspects at my at my marketing job we also worked um a lot on photo shoots so even like behind the scenes of styling and all of that I got to do so I kind of already know how like a lot of shoots are like uh put together um, and I mean, I even did, I did their, um, I, I did their social media too. So even that was already like a little bit of like practice for my own, my own stuff too. So I think that, I think that like, you know, working jobs in the field that you want to be working in are definitely important. I also think that it's just important to network because a lot of the time, you know, it's, it's who, you know, not always yeah. what 
what you know. Yeah. Um, but that's important. That's like a part of it too. Like, like networking and meeting people and, and working that way, it, it, it gets you ahead. And I mean, you kind of have to. So yeah, it sounds like in a lot of ways, you're also like, you just kind of take a fearless approach to whatever it is that you're doing, whether or not it's planning and picking an outfit or reaching out to different editors or, you know, having them approach you or just whatever, whatever you're doing, whatever endeavor you're taking on, it just seems like you're doing it fearlessly. Is that accurate? Or do you still (laughs) feel like, you know, there's stumbling blocks along the way? Are you just like, jumping in the pool? Are you still dipping in a toe? Like, where do you see yourself kind of evolving career wise, you know, maybe down a new path? Yeah, no, for sure. I think honestly, the last few years, I've really, again, like, just, I've just felt more confident in myself, like overall, like not even just like look wise or, or the way I dress anything, but even just like in who I am and like the the potential that I have or like, you know, the, the talent that are whatever that I have to like offer. Um, I think I just really trust in that a lot more now than I ever did before, which is why I would always have these like moments where I'm like, what am I going to do with my life? Um, and now I just think that instead of thinking like, what am I going to do? I don't know what my next steps are. I really try and like, um, make like goals and like, plan for like future things like what do I want to do next or like because I mean ultimately TikTok content is maybe not gonna be like a forever thing I don't I don't think I even want it to be like a forever thing for me like I love making content and I think I'll do that for as long as I possibly can but there are still so many more things I want to do um like something for instance that I've had like on my list um is I really want to work with someone on like writing a children's book. It's been like a thing that I've wanted to do forever. And I, I get so many messages from parents um, about their kids, like, you know, dressing like me from watching my videos, or they decided to like put on, you know, like a crazy fun hat to school and it's all inspired. But I just, I love kids. And I think that it's so cool to be like a role model because I didn't really have, I mean, I had, my parents, but I didn't have anyone like, like, I guess, like me now to look up to when I was young, um, to just kind of like show that you can just, you know, be you and not to be scared and like worried about being judged. And I think that especially younger kids, it's like such a, like important time in their life, especially like when they're just kind of like, you know, I don't, I don't know the age group, but you like young teenage years where you're just like lost, um, so I kind of, yeah, that's something that I really, really wanted to do. Um, and I'd also love to continue working with like designers, um, and brands that like, I really admire, like, it would be a dream to work with like Mark Jacobs or anyone like I, any, any brand that I admire, I'd love to, like Vivian Westwood. I just would love to be able to work yeah. on campaign I- them or something. <laughs> I see it happening for sure. Mm-hmm. And it is funny how. The direction of even high fashion, I think first with kind of the evolution of how high fashion designers started looking to street fashion. And Mm -hmm. now it's, I feel like the same thing's happening even with like models or muses within their campaigns is they're kind of going away from that supermodel and into that, you know, really inspiring person who's real and authentic and has their own unique vision that, that can contribute to the brand and the brand's visual identity and ethos and everything else. So I see it happening for sure. And putting it out into the universe, you heard it here first. (laughs) I, I also love the idea of a kid's book because again, it goes back to this idea of not being reliant on a trend or a medium. It's always going to be about the mess, the, the message. And I think that what, what you said with the children's book is exactly on point with that, right? Like being reliant on TikTok, you see so many content creators doing that and then they get so stuck on the numbers and then they have to follow the trends to keep up with the numbers. And then they're no longer creating content for themselves. They're sort of in this hamster wheel of this like algorithm, right? So for you to just say like, it's not even going to be about TikTok forever is really a cool approach to your art and your work as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think like there's always more out there. And I'm, I am that kind of person where I, I mean, 
I guess I, I definitely feel more fearless now. Um, again, like I think it's just, I've even went through just like so much in the last few years. I mean, everyone has really with COVID and everything, but I mean, I just think that overall, I just feel like a completely different person from when I like how I felt or like viewed myself, um, at the beginning of like the pandemic a few years ago. And I just think that I am, um, very much like, you know, you're never going to know unless you try. Um, so you can try and fail, which I would rather do than not try at all and never know. Like it's, that's just the way I, I view a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, speaking of trying, I think it's, it's definitely seems like you have sort of this like entrepreneurial spirit about you. <laughs> and I know you have a jewelry line as well. So want to talk a little bit about how that kind of evolved and came to life. Yeah. How are you interested in product design on that scale? Or do you appreciate really being the other side to style it or a mix of both? Um, honestly, I mean, so my jewelry line kind of just came out of a hobby that I did. I was like, you know, doing during the pandemic because yeah. we all, had all this extra time. Um, but actually my mom, uh, was the one who kind of started working with resin. That's what I make the jewelry out of. It's all resin. Um, and my mom was making resin coasters at the time. Um, and one time I went over and she was like, yeah, I'm making coasters. And I was like, Oh, like you can just like use a mold of anything and, and make it out of resin. And it's like a hard plastic when it hardens. Um, so the first thing that came to mind, obviously for me was jewelry because I love jewelry. I love just like anything that I can wear accessories. Um, so that's kind of how that all started. And I mean, the whole, I guess, like aesthetic behind my jewelry line is just super fun, like almost like childlike jewelry that you would wear maybe when you were like super young and you put on like fun plastic like rings and like model it to your friends and stuff. Um, I like put like a lot of like rainbow sprinkles and little candy things, little gummy bear like charms, just like fun stuff. Um, so I think that, I mean, I, I wear my own jewelry, of course. So I want it to be things that I would wear. Um, and I just started kind of like posting it, but just me wearing it. And it kind of turned into a business type thing. People loved it and people were like, I would buy it. So I made a whole website and everything. And now I also sell it in, um, we have like a local store nearby that sells a bunch of like Canadian made products, which is super cool. Um, so I sell it uh, uh, apart from my website. I sell it in that store as well. And I love doing like, we have a lot of, um, like Toronto has a lot of local, um, like markets, um, which is super fun to go to markets and like sell your, your handmade pieces and stuff there. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And I don't know, I mean, I've never, I've always thought about like clothing, like design. Um, I definitely feel like, I mean, I love styling, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if I would ever just do styling full time. Personally, I think it's, um, a career path where if you're not styling celebrities, you're kind of limited to the amount of money you can make just doing that. Right. Um, there's not just like, there's just not a huge like um, market for it, I guess. Right. Um, that makes sense. Like, yeah. Unless you're literally styling like Harry Styles. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, honestly, I'd love to be more of like, if, I mean, this is like totally maybe like years, years down the road or like never, I don't know, but it would be super cool to at least creative direct or like help creative direct like a brand. So I would love to help like design. I'm not like the kind of person who can actually like make the clothes. Um, but I do think that I have some like great ideas that I'd love to like actually work with a designer on and, and make some things like kind of actually come to life. I think that'd be super cool. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's cool that you can hone in and know what your talents are and what you love and what you don't love. But also like, it seems like in the back of your mind, you also have an understanding for the business side of it too, right? Like, what can I make money yeah. off of and there's also the element again where it's like you know you want you want to feel fulfilled doing what you're doing too so like could you have a lucrative career styling celebrities sure but would it be fulfilling no so it's kind of yep. like you know one of those like charts where it's like you follow all the yeses yeah. you know when you hit a no it's like go back to the start so 
I love that you're able to like speak to that really kind of openly and honestly too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Is there anything that before we go that you want to leave the audience with any piece of advice or like a recent story, something that's been really inspirational for you? I know you've kind of talked a lot about how your career and your current success has come from the pandemic and a really challenging time. So even being able to share kind of, you know, what helped get you through would be, I'm sure our audience would love to hear. Yeah. Honestly, for me, what helped get me through the pandemic was just getting up and getting dressed every day. Like, even though I, you know, I still do it. I still get dressed every day, even if I'm not going to leave the house. Yeah. Um, Putting on like one of my, I mean, any outfit at this point, I think I've like curated a closet of pieces that I love so much that it's hard for me to like put together an outfit where I'm like, eh, like this isn't working. Like, I just think that when you invest in pieces that you really love or they come from like friends that made them with love and stuff like that, it's just, it's hard to not like what you're wearing. And genuinely for me getting dressed every day, even if I'm not filming anything at all, just brings me like the most joy. Like it really does. Like I'll look in the mirror and just be like, I love this. Like okay, I feel we can good. start the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I feel good. Even if I'm sitting down on my laptop all day and not doing anything, I just, it's just a feeling. It's like, yeah. again, it comes back to like, it's so crazy that clothing or like makeup or hair or anything like that can make you feel that way. But I'm literally all for like doing what makes you happy. And that's just the message I try and, and try and, show and preach on all of my my social media because it's something that's changed my life (laughs) I love it well I mean it's definitely needed it's been needed you know over the past couple years but I think still heading into the future just having that optimistic approach to kind of any endeavor you take on is obviously positive but you know I think that it's a part of it too is just playing the yes game so you just kind of keep heading down that path of yes and positivity until you know your journey is just getting started but like you said of all the ideas that you have that lay ahead of you you know there's still so much more to say yes to so I think it's a beautiful message and I love that you're able to come on and share it thank you yes of course well thank thank you so much for listening to the Ola Guapa podcast I hope you gained as much value and inspiration from today's episode as I did If you love what you heard, please make sure you rate and review this episode wherever you're listening. It really helps to spread episodes like this one to other creatives looking for their daily dose of inspiration, and I would be forever grateful. But before we go, make sure you head to olaguapa.com to discover my very own passion project, Guapa, a small batch, slow fashion line. Each piece from the collection is artist made in San Diego, California, and designed to inspire your next creative adventure. Swim, sweat, street, or studio. With that, have a beautiful week, Guapas, and as always, sending you tons of inspiration and lots and lots of love.